All right, this is Crucial Python week seven on decorators. It's our logo. Um, just a quick note that this session of Crucial Python is uh, based on this blog post that I've linked to here, which um, kind of covers decorators thoroughly from the ground up. So just to have some background information so we're all on the same page, uh, the first thing that we should all be aware of is that in uh, Python, functions are first class objects. So they basically can be passed around, returned, manipulated, just as you would any other variable. Uh, here's an example. I'm defining a function called say hey, which just returns the string hey, and another function print function output, which takes as its input a function and calls the function and prints its output. Um, so as you can see, we've defined a function and it's actually just an object, and we can pass it to print function output and uh, just as if it was a variable or any other object, and then within print function output we can call it and we get hey printed out. Um, and uh, similarly, functions can be returned just like normal variables. Um, here I'm defining a function I re that returns a function called I return a function. And then within that function, defining I get returned, which is a function itself. Uh, I get returned just prints I was built in I return a function and I return a function just returns I get returned so if we call I return a function and store the result and then print it and see that result is a function and we can call it so we're assigning the output of I return a function to a variable but that variable is actually a function um, another thing that we need to know about are basically uh, function closures and um, in general Python has a number of rules about uh, what scope a function has when you define it. Um, there's a convenient uh, fact in Python basically where if you define a function in another function it remembers the local namespace of the outer function um, at defined time. So if we define this function make printer which takes as input print me, um, so that print me is a local variable to the make printer function. And then within make printer, we define the, the printer function, which prints the value of print me, and then we return printer. Uh, what printer will be is a function which prints the value of print me when make printer was called, uh, which is because that's when printer was defined. So if we call make printer with the and as input hey, a string and we call it again with u as a string, we will get two different functions which will output either hey or u. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's not a very interesting example. A slightly more interesting example, uh, which is basically the same concept as functools partial. Um, if you've used, I don't know if you've used functools, but um, it's essentially a, a collection of useful uh, tools to manipulate functions. And uh, functools partial basically um, sets default parameters to a function and returns a function that doesn't take those parameters. Um, so, for ex if a good example is if we take the int function, which is a Python built-in, um, it has a keyword argument base. Uh, so we can use functools partial to return a version of the int function with the base parameter always set to two. Um, and you can see this is pretty similar to what we were doing here. It's just that, um, yeah, so es essentially the base two will be defined within functools partial with base equals two permanently set. Um, and that allows us to have a separate function for computing base two numbers. So now we can actually get to decorators. And really decorators are just functions which take a function as input and return a function. Um, so here's a, another pretty simple example. We can define a function called double function, which takes as input a function, defines a new function called doubler, um, which returns the output of double function's input multiplied by two. And as an example, if we define a function return 10, which always returns the number 10, we can construct a new function using double function by passing return 10 into double function. And as you might imagine, return double 10 outputs 20. So because a lot of times when you're using decorators, you end up using 
this syntax a lot, function equals decorator function, basically replacing the original function with its decorated version, um, Python conveniently gives us the at syntax. And if you place at in the name of a decorator above a function, um, when the function is defined, it passes the function through the decorator, and instead of just defining the original function, it it defines the decorated function. So if we define return 20 here, which actually just returns 10, but we decorate it with double function, then when return 20 is defined, it's passed through double function, and instead of getting something that returns 10, we get something which returns 20. So that's really all decorators are. And this is not a terribly useful or interesting example, but there are a lot of places they pop up and can make your syntax clean. Um, where this came up for me recently is basically I had a bunch of functions which all carried out operations on similar uh, variables and I needed to validate that the variables were valid uh, before running the rest of the function so that you get useful error messages and you can do operations on them that you wanted to do. Um, and so that's what this example kind of does in a, in a simple way. Uh, we're defining a decorator called validate x. Um, it takes as input a function and, and it assumes that the function has as its first input x. Um, and we want x to be a float and we want it to be greater than zero. So within the decorator it's defining x function validated which is what it will return. Um, x function validated just first checks that um, x is a float. If it's not it prints a warning, tries to cast it as a float, if it can't cast it, it raises a value error with some useful diagnostic information. And then it also makes sure that x is greater than zero. And then finally, after it's done all the validation, it just returns the original function um, here. So two examples of functions where we might want this uh, behavior are if we're computing the nth root of x or inverting x, multiplying it by a number, and adding a number. So if you had a negative value of x and you computed its root, then you would get an imaginary number, or if you input 0 into invert multiply and add, you get a NAND. So anyways, it's a, it's a toy example, but it hopefully gets the idea across. So if we call root with an int, then it will warn us that x is not a float, but then it'll successfully cast it as a float and return the output that we expect. And if we call invert multiply and add with x is 0, if we didn't have the validate x decorator, we would get a nan. But because of the decorator, it throws a value error that x should be greater than 0. So again, another toy example, but there are a lot more useful and substantial examples at this link here. Um, and hopefully you now understand decorators and can start integrating them into your code.